Hello and welcome back to my Commodore 64 Demos Peak Technical Video Series. Today we're going to be looking at a demo called Concert by Performers that was released in 2016. A comment on my YouTube channel asked me to look at this demo from about 2 minutes 42 in and they wanted to see how the demo effects could be explained. So let's get into it. So yes, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel or sending me a super thanks. They are all always very much appreciated. Luckily enough, I've prepared a vice snapshot for the particular section in the demo. So let's have a look at it first in ICU 64 so we can actually see what the screen looks like. We have at least one, maybe two layers of text that's vertically scrolling at different rates with this animated effect. It's very colorful. There's lots of different effects going on, so there's different animations here. I can see when there's an intermission between the animations that there's quite a lot of decompressed data going on there in the memory view. It's doing lots of memory writes. There's some memory reads as well. There's a great big block of blue execution there in the top of the memory view. So let's have a look at using the monitor, the machine code monitor. We can have a look at the machine state. We can see that it's using a Vic bank with the text mode. Looks like there's a little bit of Y scrolling going on there, which is not a surprise because we've got some smooth Y pixel scrolling going on. We definitely have um, changing video memory. It's definitely a standard high resolution text mode. So let's see if we can find the text screens in memory first of all and we'll map in one of the character sets that's being used so we can see here that we've got at least two screens and we've got a whole bunch of extra screens as well wow look at that okay so this vic bank seems to be filled a lot with text screens there's another character set there as well in the same vic bank so there's two character sets being used and um, one, two, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Twelve screens, I think, uh, throughout the whole Vic Bank. So two character sets, twelve screens. That's uh, twenty-four screens, or something like that, perhaps. That's just a quick count off the top of my head. Let's set up two views here with uh, different character sets. So let's set this one to be F800. And then let's set the top one to be C00. And let's, in this paused state, let's have a look here. So we've got a white area here and then a black area here. So the same screens, the same screens because they're using the same screen data address, but they're using two different character sets. The character sets seem to be inverted. That would certainly help with having a large number of animation frames for what looks like the animating pattern effect there in the background. We're going to see where the stores are. So I'm doing a watch store with D800 there and we can see what the code is going to look like for that store because we can see color stores going into the memory map there in ICU 64, that yellow bar there in the far right hand side, that's the color data memory. Well, okay, that explains the very large blue execution bar in the memory debug view is that we can see that we have a whole bunch of unrolled code, which basically does load store, load store, load store for what looks like the whole color memory. And so that's an unrolled uh, vertical copy of the color memory. What we can do is that since it's using a JSR to that routine there at 25CB, JSR into 2FAE, we can use this monitor instruction to overwrite that JSR with three no ops using the EA byte there three times. That will overwrite the three bytes used for the JSR and it will effectively remove the, uh, the vertical color copy scroll. So watch the disassembly on the right hand side. There we go. The JSR has now disappeared. Let's see what effect that has on the execution of the demo. 
Well, we still have the vertically scrolling text, but the graphical data behind seems to not be moving, which is good to see. Let's just check something in the standard library here. So yes, there we go. Vic2 sprite enable is D015. We have a lot of sprites enabled. If we, if we remember what the previous um, IO D000 command was which showed the VIX state in the in this monitor here. Oh look, so if we dis disable the sprites and we've disabled the color scroll, then what looks like the text, looks like the text is actually made up of expanded sprites. So the text has disappeared when we disable the sprites. Let's fill the color data with color red and see what we get. Oh, well, there we go. Okay, so we have the character screen which has these animated effects and it's using, you know, uh, 12 screens with two character sets each, so maybe 24 frames or something like that. Didn't count it exactly, but it's a lot of frames, right? So we have the animated characters using a lot of frames. And when we fill the color screen with red, we can see what are the characters and what are background, uh, what's background data. Let's check where D011 is stored. So D011, is uh, the vertical scroll. So let's remove the vertical pixel scroll as well, right? It's it's reading that in from what looks like a table at 2604, two, x there. So if we do this, this will remove, I hope, the screen vertical scroll store for the VIC chip. And then we won't have any more uh, Y pixel scroll and we won't have any more color RAM scroll and we'll see what that looks like in the demo. So that I'm just updating the debugging notes uh, text file, which of course I will commit to source control so you can view the same notes that I've been working on. Let's get back to that machine code monitor window. Where was it? Uh, that's the vice windows. Yes, let's, let's quit the memory view. We're not really interested in the memory view at this stage. We've, we've got what we can deduce from it already. There we go, there's the monitor window. So let's get rid of D011 store. And then let's have a look at what that looks like in, in the demo. Ah, well, yes, there we go, you see. Ah, that's a very good pointer. So look, without the Y pixel scroll, the animated effect is juddering up and down very quickly. So this tells me that the effect is counter scrolling to the Y pixel scroll direction. If you've seen my previous videos or some of them anyway, this is a technique which is used in parallax scrolling to either make something stationary or to slow it down with respect to the main screen Y pixel scroll. So with this animated data, having the Y counter scroll or the opposite scroll, if you like, the opposite movement baked into it, it means that the animation will look stationary even though the screen is Y pixel scrolling. So on the Commodore 64, we have two screens roughly in this mode. We have the text, the graphics data, and then we have the color data. But the color data doesn't have counter scrolling put, in, put into it. So what we have here is that if we fill the entire screen memory. If we dis disable the sprites, if we uh, disable, um, what was that, the uh, JSR for the, for the color scroll, if we uh, disable the vertical pixel Y update, then there we go, you see, we've just got the animated screens being displayed. So we can see definitely that the animated screen display is just look, just looks like this, right? So let's enable the sprites. Well, definitely now, the sprites, we can see that it's it's basically that little high resolution graphic that walks across every now and again, but it's definitely the text that you see. So the sprite priority is actually behind the text screen. So this tells us very usefully that if we go back to the snapshot now, let's uh, disable some of the layers uh, in this demo again, just to really uh, demonstrate and really make sure what's going on. So we want to uh, disable the sprites, but we have the color scroll 
enabled and we have the color RAM update enabled. So you can see with the Y pixel scroll being smooth, the, the color RAM displays this graphic data in the background. Now it's chunky graphics data, of course, because it's eight by eight pixels for each character cell. But the character cells themselves are being counter scrolled in, in, in the opposite direction to the Y pixel scroll. But the color data is not. The color data is still smooth pixel scrolling. So that's how this part of the demo works. It's very cleverly using uh, the color RAM smooth pixel scroll to introduce this nice graphical layer in the background. With the the black and the and the white, well, the black and the colors for uh, this part of the demo are actually coming from the high resolution text animations there. And then behind all of that, we have all of these sprites coming on as well for the uh, for the expanded sprites for the vertically scrolling text. And maybe there's some other like incidental graphics and stuff like that coming along too. But that's how this demo has such a, a large number of apparent visual layers is that it's using the disconnect between the stationary but animating uh, character screen and the smooth Y pixel scrolling color RAM beneath this. You can see if I enable just the first four sprites, it's only showing the letters for the scrolling text on the left hand side. Now, quite sneakily, I think this demo, I think also introduces some text at the beginning with the color RAM scroll or something like that, perhaps. And, and that's what tricks the eye into thinking that you've got more layers than, than actually, you know, we don't. It, it's just got the color RAM pixel scroll layer, the animated, uh, with well, the animated pattern layer and the sprites introducing the text layer there. And then there's a high resolution sprite as well, because uh, you know if you're using horizontally expanded sprites, then horizontally expanded sprites, as long as you space them out, then they will fill the whole horizontal scan line with about seven sprites, six to seven sprites, depending on your spacing. And then you've got the eighth sprite available. So the eighth sprite is a high resolution, non-expanded sprite. And you can see that there's a Monty Mole um, animated animated frames there walking along or the Commodore you know like balloon or the uh, the thrust spaceship that's, that's trying to animate around so this is a rather clever part to this demo it uses a couple of different effects but when you add them all together then those f effects generate a really pleasing kind of like graphical complexity to the whole thing so this is part is interesting in the demo. You can see that when there is an intermission between the different animated effects, the screen shows a static character screen, but it's vertically wire scrolling. And then you can see from the character sets view how many frames it takes. It takes several frames actually for the character sets and the text screen uh, data to be decompressed into the memory. Maybe it's algorithmically generated as well, or partially, but it looks like it's just basically running decompression over several frames uh, in the background. And then this, this demo has obviously packed in several different um, animated effects, which makes it look even better. So you can see, there we go, there's the intermission between the two different animated effects. So it's just basically showing a nice you know, like static screen, but just including the Y pixel scroll, uh, just for some variation between between the uh, intermission and the actual animated character screen. So it's a very clever, um, inter uh, it's a very clever changeover between the different animated effects. But basically, it's the same kind of thing. It's using multiple text screens and a couple of different character sets to actually generate this effect. Another interesting thing, so if I change the sprite priority, which is this register so that the sprites are in front of the text, then you can see that this demo effect kind of uh, breaks down a little bit. It's very obvious now where the sprites are. Normally the, the viewer is conditioned to thinking that sprites are on top, not behind the text screen. So when sprites are behind a text screen, uh, it's a little bit confusing to the eye and you get this masking kind of effect. Whereas if the sprites are just over the top, it's very obvious the sprites are floating up above 
the text screen. They have priority over the text screen, so you can definitely easily see where the sprites are. Now, they're not poking through the transparent background of the text screen that's, that would have been in front. So that's why this demo effect is enhanced by having the sprites behind, because then you are masking the text layer from the sprites with the foreground layer of the uh, animated uh, character effects. So I think we can leave this uh, demo there. There isn't too much that we need to get into. If you like these kind of deep technical dives, especially the demos videos or the games videos, then please do uh, leave a comment in the comment section below or send me a message on Twitter or wherever. And I hope to see you around next time. Have a great day, evening or night, wherever you are.